Hello, today we're going to be doing something different. We will be modifying a stereo on a 2008 Suzuki Grand Vitara and other models for that matter which may also share a similar issue. The disclaimer is that I'm not a professional mechanic and that will be apparent later on. The entire process is improvised. In the end I'll share my opinions uh, on what I would have done differently. The problem I'm talking about has to do with the auxiliary audio input, or more specifically the lack thereof available on uh, vehicles equipped with a standard CD player slash uh, radio combination. What I'm thinking is adding a standard 3.5mm audio jack to one of these expansion ports that are found all over Suzuki. They're designed for things like fog lights and premium features such as seat warmers, and I think they would make an ideal thing for a port installation. I know in some cars uh, headphone jacks sometimes get inserted into cup holders uh, but I, I don't think I'm gonna do that with my car. For step one we need to access the internals and to do that we have to remove these side panels. The best tool for that sort of work is a butter knife or something with a flat edge that's not going to scratch too much of the plastic because uh, plastic inside Suzuki is very soft, it's very easily scratched with even the basic tool like a screwdriver. Uh, all you have to do is wedge the knife underneath any of the gray plastic uh, pieces and lift them vertically. If uh, they're not sitting in place too snug you can sometimes even use your own fingernails and just the tension of your own skin to lift these panels so you may even accomplish the same task without using a knife like I'm doing here. For the next step we have to remove all of the screws. I was hoping that I would be able to extract the stereo section just by removing the top four but uh, it turned out that it wasn't as easy as I was anticipating and I had to unscrew pretty much everything. I also discovered some backwards facing screws that I assumed were holding the top of the stereo to the lower section, but even after removing those I was still unable to separate the stereo into its individual components and uh, at this point I realized that I was going to have to extract the entire panel to work on it. In addition I encountered difficulty with the lower panel, regardless of how much I wiggled everything, all the top pieces uh, eventually snapped off uh, and got released from their hinges, but the lower panel, no matter how much pulling and shifting I did, it just wouldn't budge, it remained in place. In addition, uh, the stick shift prevented me from uh, gracefully pulling out the top section, even after I disconnected all the cables uh, by reaching behind it. Well, I guess it's done to make stealing of the stereo a lot more difficult for potential thieves. Uh, speaking of cables and all the ports that get connected to your stereo column, you don't have to worry about memorizing the layout because each plug is individual and you cannot uh, accidentally plug them into the non-designated spots. And this is what the car looks like when uh, most of the electronic guts are removed. Just two more cables to go, the stereo antenna and uh, the last power controller. And that's it, stereo comes out just like that as a complete unit. And here I'm looking at the gap between the two pieces, even though it looks like it could be separated into halves no matter what I tried, I just wasn't successful. So I took it to my kitchen as one piece in order to work on it. Interestingly, even with the entire central console removed and the car going like crazy with all the warning lights, I was still able to drive it back into the garage uh, in this soy state. And what we're interested in here is this white port located on the low right section of the reverse of the stereo. Uh, this is where we will be installing our custom expansion and I'll explain what it is. First you're going to need a resistor. I'm using 1 kilo ohm. Suzuki recommends 1.5, but on forums I'm reading that anything between 1 and 10 kilo ohms works just as easily. This resistor will need to go between the two trigger leads as indicated on this diagram, and it will serve as an activator for the auxiliary input button. Additionally, the stereo components will be connected like this. The biggest uh, connector is the ground wire, the one in the middle is the right stereo channel, and this pin leads to the left stereo channel, which is the tip of this 3.5mm stereo jack. 
For the plug, I'm borrowing this header extension from an old CD-ROM drive. And all I have to do to make it workable in my case is, uh, with the help of a needle, I'm going to move some of the connectors to the edge where they're needed, because we're going to be utilizing pins on the very right in that port. And if we're to combine two of the plugs like that, then we can get a complete replica of a factory socket that would be installed by a dealer uh, performing the same modification. Here you can see me soldering the resistor between the two trigger pins, encasing in a insulated heat shrink, and then installing it behind the stereo. It's literally as easy as you see in this video. I'm also putting some extra insulation behind the resistor and another strip of electrical tape over it to be absolutely sure that it doesn't get um, tangled with other wires behind the stereo. What I'm doing here is fairly obvious. I'm using a wire that I borrowed from a broken set of headphones and installing the 3.5mm socket as was showing in the picture diagram earlier. Next, you can see me drilling a hole for the 3.5mm socket inside my poorly lit garage. At this point, I decided to change the location of the 3.5mm socket simply for the reason that the plastic in the area where you see me drilling is a lot thinner than those extractable expansion ports that I wanted to use. In addition, you have to remember that I wasn't able to pull the bottom panel out, so I decided to do the easiest and most accessible thing uh, that came to my mind. And just as I was installing the port, the bottom panel finally by accident snapped off and it turned out that it wasn't held in place with anything. It's just the hinges were a little bit stubborn. And if I applied just a tiny bit more force initially, I would have had access to it all along and I wouldn't have to drill it inside the car. Uh, it would have been a lot more convenient if I just had it on my workbench. And here it is, the moment of truth. Uh, I'm testing the socket before everything is assembled. You can see it, uh, it being plugged into my cell phone and even without the device being connected you can already see that the stereo is able to go into auxiliary mode yep and the music is playing totally playing at this point i'm happy to conclude that the mod is a complete success uh, the only thing left to do is to go back and share some of my thoughts on things that i should have done differently now that i had a chance to go through with the project and re-examine it in hindsight and now that I know that the section is removable, obviously it would have been a lot better if I drilled it uh, like this. Another thing that I noticed was that even though the plastic was thin in the area where I processed it, it was still a bit too thick for the 3.5mm audio socket. Most of them do not extend very far and that has to do with the fact that the plug itself is not infinitely long. And here I'm going back with a Dremel to make the plastic a little bit thinner than it is. I have to go with very low RPMs. Uh, I'm setting my Dremel to 10, which is one of the lowest settings. And I'm doing this because the plastic, if you apply too much friction to it, will begin to melt and warp from the other side. So it is very important to keep low RPM settings. Another thing that I'm doing here is I'm keeping one of my fingers on the other side of the plastic, and that helps me to sense the temperature. So if I begin applying too much pressure and friction and I start feeling like the temperature of the plastic is rising too fast, then I go easier on it. And I work my way around like that, just because it's much easier to make a round indentation than a rectangular hole, specifically for the type of socket that I'm using. But in the end, it's all the same. The main purpose of doing this is to allow proper installation of this mounting nut on the other side of the 3.5mm socket, without which it will not either sit firmly in place or it may prevent full insertion of the stereo plug into the socket. Originally I put some glue uh, from a glue gun onto the back to keep the socket in place but with the surface being black and exposed to the sunlight uh, the obvious thing happened is the glue melted away and it created more mess than there should have been. So uh, my suggestion is do it properly, do it like this from the very beginning. And even though this mod um, speaks specifically of the car that I'm using, which is Suzuki Grand Vitara, I'm aware of at least four other models with similar looking stereos. Uh, I mean, just by looking at it, you will be able to recognize a similar type in the car that you may be using. 
uh, and the procedure is pretty much the same for all the Suzuki models. There is a number of um, articles online and forum posts that describe in great detail, step-by-step -step instructions, uh, practically repeating that I've shown you in this video. So in case your mod differs, uh, please feel free to indicate in the comment section. And uh, I'm going to post a few relevant links in there as well, in case you want to do the same sort of modification to your car and yours isn't Suzuki Grand Vitara. This marks the end of another successful project, so all that's left to say is, see you next time!